Welcome back to the GCP Mindset channel. Today we will talk about audits in clinical trials. As this topic is a little bit complicated, we will make more than one video on this. So let's start with part one. More after the intro. An instrument of quality assurance is the so-called audit. These audits exist next to quality control. Most investigators involved with clinical trials will get an audit for compliance with the GCP regulation someday. Such a GCP audit is defined as follows. A systematic and independent examination of trial-related activities and documents to determine whether the evaluated trial-related activities were conducted and the data were recorded, analyzed, and accurately reported according to the protocol. Sponsors Standard Operating Procedures, or SOPs, Good Clinical Practice, GCP, and the applicable regulatory requirements. The crucial point of this definition is that auditors have to work independently. As a rule, auditors create a plan about which studies are to be audited at which trial sites. In choosing the studies and the number of trial sites, both the extent of the study and current conditions are respected. The function of an auditor is to review data according to the ALCOA concept and to decide whether there are deficiencies. For more on the ALCOA principle, click here. This is the case whenever deviations from SOPs exist in the process of the clinical trial from preparation to reporting. For example, due to logs which have not been filled in, non-compliance with the protocol, or violation or ignorance of legal requirements. Many auditors interview principal investigators and thereby test the knowledge of GCP with questions about the definition of an SAE, for example. Not only records compiled by you are audited, but also data assessment, data management protocols, and even final study reports. Auditors are not interested in criticism, but they are particularly interested in continued improvement of the quality of the study, or trial. This should be achieved by the so-called CAPA process. CAPA stands for Corrective and Preventative Actions. Whenever something is incorrect, as in the case in every trial, the error needs to be corrected and an action should be taken to prevent this mistake from happening again. However, the trial personnel of the sponsor do not always see an audit as an opportunity for improvement, and not every auditor is able to convey this approach. An audit must be performed independently of sponsor and site. As a rule, bigger and even medium-sized sponsors have internal quality departments. These are departments which are independent of the company, whose employees can even criticize their superiors due to their detachment from company hierarchy. Small biotech companies, however, often outsource the auditing because otherwise their independence would not be preserved due to the size of the company. In the case where CROs themselves are audited, this is usually done by third-party CROs or by freelance auditors. That's all for today. We hope you learned something interesting about audits, and we're looking forward to catching you next time when we speak about the different types of audits in part two. Have a great day. See you soon. Hey there, don't forget, like and subscribe, but most importantly, click that bell so you never miss another video.